Ronak, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so you've just come back from Lagos and, uh, you know, talking off air, you're talking about the airport in Lagos, uh, a lot of progress still to be made there. But on the ground, are you starting to see um, the evidence that reforms are starting to uh, improve uh, the economy, you know, in, in various parts of, of kind of sectors and everything? I think that's definitely the case. Um, you know, Nigeria's got a lot of challenges, but um, if you look at the good, uh, good luck Jonathan, he came to power on the back of a reform agenda, and that is really what's going to drive his legacy. Um, if you look at what's been happening uh, over the past year and a half since he's come to power, and you look at the key personnel that he's appointed um, in the Ministry of Finance, Ngozi okonjo Iweala, who's uh, got World Bank experience. If you look at the Ministry of, of Trade and Investment, Olusego Naganga, who's got Goldman Sachs experience. And if you look at key clusters of the economy, NSC looking head as well. NSC, the, the power sector until uh, the minister's resignation, the agricultural sector, um, these are all key technocrats who have got uh, vast experience and are driving structural change. Now, if you look at the monetary policy side, we all know what uh, Governor Sanusi has been doing since he came to power in 2009. So I think you, what you're starting to see is some real synergy on the policy front and some definite positive momentum um, because the structures and the institutions, uh, as well as the, the policies, are, are now being put in place to, to drive uh, strong growth going forward. I think people often tend to be impatient. Mm. You want change straight away and uh, you know, removing all these inefficient bureaucratic mm. structures and putting more competitive structures in place takes time. Mm. Let's talk about the uh, power sector because uh, a positive is, of course, the fact that five bids uh, were awarded uh, contracts yesterday to, to buy those power projects mm. and that of course part of the privatization process uh, when you talk about the power sector do you think that we're moving along um, in, a, in a kind of mo with momentum that is needed in order to to reach the goals of the uh, of the economy uh, power privatization is something that good luck Jonathan's been pushing since since 2010 when he assumed power on an incumbent basis um, you know, there were fears that with the resignation of the minister uh, a while ago that, you know, the process could be derailed. But yesterday's news is a definite positive. And I think on the 16th of October, you're also going to see the, the highest bidders in the process um, being announced as well. It hasn't been without controversy. And of course, the resignation uh, was seen as one of the controversies, although it can be seen as a positive step forward when it comes to mm. governance. Um, but what are your thoughts on some of the controversies that have really bogged down uh, this privatization process? I think in, in Nigeria, you need to understand that it's a very complex place uh, and you know it's never going to be plain sailing. There are going to be a lot of hurdles to, to overcome. But I think if you look at the, the minister's resignation, there was you know very limited evidence or it was a very very um, you know the, the case was, was quite weak against him. So to for a minister to resign uh, on the basis of you know, allegations case, yeah is unheard of in Nigerian po uh, politics and also speaks to the strong um, anti-corruption drive that the, the government is pursuing at the moment. Positive signal, as, as I was mm. saying, you know, when we're talking about the petroleum industry bill and I suppose the oil and gas sector, mm. it's a bit of a different story. We do have a, a new a draft bill on the table that many say uh, takes out all the, um, all the issues that were a concern in the previous bill. But then you've got the likes of the Shell MD coming out and saying that they're still unhappy with this. So what are your thoughts on the latest bill? I mean, you know, the, the petroleum industry bill has been in the pipeline for over four years. So there are a lot of vested interests and you're never going to please uh, everyone um, in this process. Cabinet ratified the, the bill sometime in August and now it needs to pass, to pass through the, the National Assembly. Many people have said that, you know, they expect it to come through before the end of the year. I think that's very, very optimistic. I think best case scenario, we're looking at Q1 uh, 2013 realistically uh, before the, the second half of the year next year. Um, you know, the, the oil industry is, is critical to Nigeria and this bill is, is vital in unlocking uh, a lot of the investment that's been dormant uh, for, for some time now. So I think any bill, regardless of the merits, uh, is, is a good bill because it creates some kind of certainty and allows for investment to flow back into it's the economy. It's time now for the bill to be passed, exactly. whether it's perfect or not, yeah. you know, one might say. Um, when we're talking about security, of course, either this could be an issue that could really derail any of President Goodluck Jonathan's plans. Um, and, you know, the, the view by some is that, in fact, the inefficiencies of the Nigerian government have really created this Boko Haram uh, security threat. Um, what are your thoughts on, on how this might derail economic growth going forward? Well, undoubtedly, it's a it's a definite headache for for the Jonathan administration. Um, it's been something that's plagued him since he's come to power. Do you think military, the use of the military, has been inappropriate? So I think there there needs to be a, a two pronged strategy. On on the one front, 
you need to be aggressive and I think, you know, use military intervention and, um, you know, uh, beef up your, your intelligence gathering capabilities. And I think that's, that seems to be happening now with, with um, you know, the success of, of wiping out a, a number of key Boko Haram personnel last week. But also on the benign front, you need to address the socioeconomics of the situation. Um, look at the root causes of, of the violence, the marginalized north, the lack of economic opportunities that people, people uh, are getting in, in, in that, that region. Uh, and you know, it needs to be a holistic um, approach to, to tackling the, the, the conflict. So I think you know, the government seems to be um, getting a handle on this now, following the, um, the, the fact that Jonathan fired both his defense minister and his chief security advisor sometime in June. So I think they, they seem to, to have a handle on it now, but uh, by no means should they be complacent. Um, do I think it's going to be a systemic threat to the country? Uh, not really. Thank you so much. A positive note to end off on. Thank you very much for joining us today, Ronak Gabaldas, Country Risk Analyst from RMB.